Hi guys, welcome to Adrian's Digital Basement. Now if you're into old PC gaming like I am, you probably run into an issue. And it's that most old computers like this Tandy 1000EX or 5150, 5160, those types of computers, they all use digital RGB as their output to the monitors. Some of them like this computer has composite as well, but the output quality is really not good. You really need to use the digital RGB output to an appropriate monitor to get the best possible picture quality. So one big issue if you're getting into retrocomputing now is it's really starting to become hard to find these monitors. One big problem is they're very heavy and when you ship them through eBay, unless they're packed absolutely perfectly, there's a good chance they're going to get damaged in shipping. Another problem is that CRTs are consumable items. The picture tube itself wears out as you use it more and more. So you might be buying a monitor for a pretty hefty price and pay expensive shipping and it might arrive intact, but the monitor might have been used so much that the picture is dim and blurry. And in that case, the only way you're going to fix that monitor is to replace the entire picture tube. I'm lucky to actually have some TTL RGB monitors like this Tandy CM5 which is the matching monitor that goes with this Tandy 1000EX. But I obtained this locally off Craigslist and it was really luck of the draw. And it happens to be in really good shape with a very clear and bright picture. I'm under no illusions though that this monitor is going to last forever. And if I use this monitor any amount of time, it will wear out, as will all CRTs. So because of those problems, I've been looking for ways to hook up these old original hardware machines to more modern monitors or perhaps to other CRT monitors that don't have digital TTL input. Let's look at one possible way to make this happen. Keep in mind I'm going to be showing you everything on this Tandy 1000EX, but everything I'm going to show you here will work fine on any computer that outputs a CGA compatible signal. That's a 9-pin digital TTL RGB signal that runs at 15.7 kilohertz. And other computers that use that are the Commodore 128, the IBM PC 5150, 5160, 5170, anything with a CGA card, all the Tandy 1000 computers, and there's probably a whole slew of others. But keep in mind this is not compatible with EGA, which runs at a different scan rate, or VGA, which is an analog RGB format at a higher scan rate as well. This will only work on CGA compatible 16 color digital RGB outputs. So the first step in this modernization process is converting the digital TTL signal to an analog RGB signal. And for me, I'm using the GC Lab CGA to RGB converter. I just bought this off of eBay the other day. It was $39 with free shipping. Unfortunately, as you see on this paper here, there are zero available and they've sold 262. So they come in and out of stock periodically and you just have to catch one when they appear. But unfortunately, this is the linchpin for this process and it's not very easy to come by. So just keep your eyes peeled if you're gonna to try to do something similar to this. The way these boards work is pretty simple. It has a nine pin input for the CGA signal and it goes through a gal or a pal and that does some conversion with the sync and also it outputs an analog signal. Well actually it uses a little resistor network to be a simple digital to analog converter and that converts the various colors into analog signals. The little surface mount chip there is a little buffer driver, which just allows it to drive the analog video signal through these pins here on this VGA connector. There's a jumper here which allows you to select between horizontal and vertical sync that are separate, which is the native type of sync that's available on CGA, and a composite sync. And when you put it on the jumper setting I have right now, it outputs a composite sync signal on the horizontal sync output on the VGA connector. That'll come into play in a little bit and I'll talk more about that in a second. And you also have to give the board five volts of power and that's what these little wires are for here. Let's hook this up to the Tandy right now. And to do that, you simply need a cable like this, which is a nine pin with a male and a female, one on each end. Plug the female end of the cable into the adapter and we plug the other end into the Tandy or whatever computer you're gonna be using. Please realize that this converter does not change the scan frequency. So all it's doing is converting from digital RGB to analog. That means that you're going to need to use a monitor or display device that supports 15.7 kilohertz analog RGB. One such example is this PVM Sony monitor, but you could also use something like an Amiga 1084S or any other analog RGB monitor that supports either composite sync or horizontal and vertical sync. 
There are several other types of monitors that are analog RGB. The Apple IIgs GS monitor is a 15.7 gigahertz monitor and it uses the composite sync signal. The Atari monitors that came with the Atari STs, those are also analog RGB. I'm not sure which type of sync signal they use, but since this board can do either, you can probably make an adapter cable to make this work with that. But here I'm gonna just show you it working on my Sony PVM. This takes a composite sync signal. It does not use the horizontal and vertical. So I have a VGA cable here that on the back end has BNC connectors, which go on the back of the monitor. And I have this set for composite sync. You do need to make sure you give five volts to the little board, which is what I'm doing with these wires here. They're going to my bench power supply. So if I turn on the Tandy, okay, underscan, there it is booting up. Sorry for the glare from my bench light here. Unfortunately with the Sony PVM, the, scene, the screen is not that black, so it definitely shows up. So here we are booted up into DOS, and as you see on the Sony PVM, it's absolutely a really sharp monitor. It looks fantastic. So running in the full 80 columns mode, we have absolutely no problem with the sharpness of the text, and also colors and everything else renders absolutely perfectly. So this is all well and good if all I wanted to do was connect my TTL RGB to something that doesn't support TTL like the Sony PVM. But this doesn't take away from the fact that we're still using it with the CRT. And I really want to use it with something much more modern like my Lenovo flat screen monitor here, which has an HDMI input. Let's take it to the next level. So what we have here is the next piece in the puzzle. This box is what really allows us to take it to the next level. What this is, is a SCART or HDMI to HDMI video converter. And if you look at this side here, it takes a SCART input and this does support RGB and it outputs it to HDMI. First, let's take a look at the eBay listing, which of course is where I got this. So this box costs about $22 shipped from China. And there's something very special about this particular box that is different than a lot of these other SCART converters. So I pop the top of the HDMI converter box. And there's something special about this particular box that differs from other ones I've found off eBay. The difference is what's underneath this heatsink. Underneath is an integrated circuit, the MST6M180XT. Now what all that means is that chip is actually a system on a chip that normally drives an LCD television. It's the brains of the entire operation of an LCD TV. And as you know, LCD TVs typically have various inputs like SCART, composite, HDMI, and other things like S-Video. And what this chip does is it acts just like an actual television set. So whatever you're plugging into the inputs is now converted into what would be displayed on an LCD panel. But there's no LCD panel here. We actually have an HDMI output. And that's what's underneath this blue heatsink is there's an HDMI transmitter. So they connected this HDMI transmitter to the outputs that would normally be driven to an LCD panel so that anything that is shown on the LCD screen on this TV is actually coming out of this. There's a button that allows you to pick the resolution. That's one of these here. And it cycles through several. Now SCART is a very interesting input format. Here in the United States, we were never blessed to have this on our television sets. If you have a TV that has SCART already on it and you live in Europe, you won't even need this box. You could just use this little adapter directly with your SCART input using a cable, which I'm going to show you in a second. But for me in North America, because all I have is TVs and displays with HDMI inputs, I need to use this to convert from the analog RGB that's output from my GC Labs converter into HDMI. One side note about this box, there are several others that look different on eBay. Don't buy those. You have to buy the one that looks exactly like this that has the HDMI video converter with the same connections as this and the same buttons. If it doesn't have this, it's very much likely the much more inferior converters. And for the same exact price as this, you can find much crappier ones that have a terrible picture quality. Another side note is the power supply that comes with these are absolute junk. This just runs off five volts. So I recommend that you take the five volt power supply and throw it in the garbage immediately when you get it and find an old router power supply. This is a Linksys five volt power supply and use that instead. And the third note about these is they do not come with heat sinking on either of these chips. This transmitter chip is probably fine without a heat sink, but this chip absolutely positively needs a heat sink. So do not run this without it. If you do, the board will overheat and you will have problems. 
So next up is we need to be able to get this signal from the VGA output of this and into the SCART input on this box. And how do we do that? So I bought a very inexpensive SCART RGB video cable off eBay. It was only a couple dollars shipped from China. I think it was designed for a Sega Saturn. It had a round DIN connector on this end, which I just cut off, and I added a 9-pin connector. I'll talk about the way I soldered this together in a moment, but I wrote on here analog and C-Sync. So that's a reminder that SCART only supports composite sync over RGB. It does not support horizontal and vertical. So if you have something that outputs horizontal and vertical only and no composite, you will need to build a little circuit to convert that. We just need one more thing to make this all work. So this cable here is the last piece of the puzzle. And what this does is it converts from the 15 pin VGA style connector, and that's right here, so that connects to that, to a nine pin, and that allows me to plug my SCART cable into this. And why I did this is for the most possible flexibility. This cable specifically is to use with this adapter, but this nine pin connector actually works with a lot of other things. Let me show you some examples. This right here is an Atari ST to nine pin RGB adapter I made. And the real reason I made this, and it says RGB C-Sync, is so I could use my Commodore 1084 monitor on the actual Atari. But it actually allows me to connect these together, although I need a gender changer or a little cable to do that, so I can connect my Atari ST to this SCART converter as well. Here's another adapter I made, and I wrote on this, Coco 3 RGB H plus V sync analog. So here is another RGB adapter I made. So I have a TRS-80 Coco 3, Color Computer 3, that also has RGB output, that is analog, just like the Atari ST, and that also can connect to this. And that's how I get the Coco working with this box. Here's another cable. This is an OEM cable, and if you notice there's a Commodore logo, what this is is the 23 pin connector that goes on the back of the Amiga, and that goes to the 1084. So this is the original 1084 video cable for the Amiga. So if I connect these together, then now I have an Amiga 23 pin to SCART, and I can connect it to this box, and that outputs HDMI. So that's why I made this cable like I did, for maximum flexibility for this box. Back to the problem at hand. How do I convert my digital TTL to work on HDMI? I made this cable, and you can see this middle section here is where I cut it and spliced it all together. I'll show you the wiring in a moment. But we connect this VGA right there. And on this end, we have the 9 pin, which is in the correct pinout of sort of the 1084 and all those other standards I was showing you, and that connects to there. And then this SCART cable plugs in like that. So there it is all connected together. Let's take a look at the pinout of this custom cable. So whenever I make cables, I always do a little spreadsheet for myself, and then I print it out, and that helps me make the cable so I know that I'm doing it correctly. And over here on the left, I have the 9-pin side of the connection. And a 9-pin typically has two grounds, red, green, blue, not connected, composite sync, H-sync, and V-sync. And then there's the shield. Most 9-pin monitors, like the 1084, actually accept all of these signals. Although, I'm not clear if the 1084, while it's in analog mode, accepts H and V sync, or ignores those and only looks at the C sync. As I showed you that Commodore cable a moment ago, only had the C sync signal, and it had these two pins missing. But nonetheless, the way I wired up this connection here for the SCART cable, is I wired up the grounds, the red, green, and blue, the C sync wire, which is used typically like for that Amiga cable, and I also wired the H-Sync to the C-Sync, so these two pins are bridged. The next column here is when I cut the cable, these were the colored wires inside the cable that match up with these pins. If we skip over here to the right side, we have the 15-pin side of the cable, and we have the colors that match up to the various pins, which I've labeled here. So there's pins 1 through 15, plus shield. We got red, green, blue, a bunch of grounds, H-Sync and V-Sync, and then a lot of no, no connections and things. When you're using an actual VGA monitor plugged into a VGA controller card, there's extra wires for Sense and DCI, like some data exchange stuff. All that stuff is not being used in this case. So all we really need to do is figure out how to wire the red, green, blue, and the sync signals over to the other side. So this is the little conversion chart I made. So all I did was when I wired the 
cables together. You know, I'd wire the nine pin blue wire to the gray, et cetera, et cetera. I bought this cable as a complete set, it was already manufactured, and I have no idea why it was wired up in such a strange way. None of the pins made sense, so I had to cut it and rewire it completely. So if you recall back to a moment ago, I explained that there is no C-Sync output normally on a VGA connection like this, just horizontal and vertical. And you can see that right here with these two pins, 13 and 14. But when you set this jumper to this particular setting, what this board does is it outputs the composite sync signal on the H-Sync pin. So the H-Sync pin, which is the red wire, is now outputting the composite sync. And I have now wired on the other side, that would be in here, this black, this is the SCART cable, and this is the SCART connector. Inside there, I have bridged the H-Sync, the black, and the green together. But I've actually done that inside here. I didn't do it in the cable, I just did it in there. And that means that when I use this particular adapter, well, I send the C-Sync signal through the H-Sync wire, that's through this cable. When it gets to this, the SCART cable, it then connects it to the correct C-Sync pin going into the box. So I know that was a little complicated and I hope it makes sense, but, but I'll put a link to that spreadsheet in the description below so you can check that out. So if you need to make one of these cables yourself, you can do that. All right, so let's wire this up so this works. So right here we have the output cable from the Tandy. This is the digital TTL RGB signal. We're gonna connect that to the input of this adapter board. Next, we're gonna take the 15 pin to nine pin adapter cable I made, and we're gonna connect that to the output of that board. Then we take the nine pin that it's now adapted and we connect that to my homemade SCART cable. And the SCART cable connects to the input of the box. We can't forget that we need to plug five volts into the converter box. And we also need to give five volts to the adapter board. So I'll turn on my bench power supply. It uses about 30 milliamps, by the way. And then I'm going to turn on the Tandy. Of course, I have to connect the HDMI that goes into my monitor to the output on the converter box. And you see here it says no signal. This is being generated from this box because remember I told you that it acts like a li an LCD television. So normally an LCD TV, if you had nothing plugged into it, it would show the same no signal. So I'm gonna turn on the Tandy and we should get a picture. There's a lot of glare in my uh, monitor. Hello there, you can see the camera. But this is the best I can do with this particular screen. There it is, booting up. Take a look at that. Look how sharp that is. These boxes work quite well. While it boots, I'm gonna show you some of the different settings by pushing buttons on this thing. The button that says 1080p slash 720p, if I push that, it will cycle through the various resolutions that this box will output. So there's 1280 by 720. There's 1080p, which incidentally, this particular monitor here will stretch those HD resolutions and not letterbox them because they are four by three. It will stretch them to full width, which is why you see this is now wider. If I push this again, goes to 800 by 600. And I think there's 1024 by 768. Yep, there it is. And 1280 by 1024. I found that for four by three content, that works the best. It, it gives you the best sharpness and quality. That's what I've at least seen. So right now we are displaying a 640 by 200 or 640 by 240 display. So it's what, 240p? And I must admit that the quality is quite good. There's a little bit of lag that's introduced by this box because if you imagine it's acting like an LCD television, so there is some processing going on. So this may not be great for super fast action games, but for using a computer through this, like your mouse movements and stuff, it's totally fine. And the sharpness here is quite good, and it looks like this when you're using your Atari ST or your Amiga, so that's nice. But clearly, this CGA graphics looks absolutely fantastic. So let's take a look at some CGA, or actually Tandy 1000 16 color graphics, through all of this on my HDMI screen, and let's just see how good this looks. So being this is December 24th, I'm gonna run the most appropriate demo there is. Yep, what we got here is the Sierra Christmas demo, which is just my favorite. Let's watch.
Sorry to talk over the music, but I just want to point out that the graphics look fantastic. Sure, there's no scan lines, but all the colors are represented perfectly. CGA graphics has this dark yellow, which turns into brown, which is what we're seeing here. And luckily, the CGA to RGB adapter converts that absolutely perfectly. But looking at the picture quality here, there's no lines, there's no interlacing, there are no artifacts, it just looks fantastic. Well, there you go. I hope you found this interesting. I'm really happy with how this turned out. I know there are other ways to do this conversion, but as far as I'm aware, none of them so cheaply convert from CGA all the way up to HDMI with such good quality uh, as this particular solution and offer the flexibility of working with other systems like the Amiga and the Atari ST and the Coco. So use this with your other RGB things and then this converter here allows you to use it with all your CGA devices. <laughs> if you like this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, you know, you feel free to put a thumbs down. Uh, definitely put your comments and questions in the comment section below. You can subscribe for more videos. And lastly, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, Season's Greetings, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Festivus, Happy Kwanzaa, Happy whatever you believe in. Enjoy yourselves for the rest of this year, and we'll probably see you in 2019. Bye!